Hello, my name is Donna Lipchuk, and I would like to read to you a poem that I wrote to commemorate the memory of my dear friend Jack Layton, and it's called The Greatest Prime Minister We Never Had. <clears throat> the greatest prime minister we never had, Jeremy Gilbert Jack for short Layton, was born in the atomic age of 1950 in the just French enough town of Hudson, Quebec, a genteel old town full of rose bushes, white clapboard houses, and middle class Anglophonies. Not quite Westmount, but close enough to the Gatineau to channel the spirits of the fathers of Confederation lurking in the pink quartz and the treetops, tickling the crazy blue sky above the Greek ruins in the home of William Lyon Mackenzie King, and near enough to see the gyrating dancers and the pink rays of the Foo Foo Electric in Montreal where the greatest prime minister we never had studied political science at McGill. The greatest prime minister we never had, Jack, back to Jack in the 90s late, married his high school sweetheart at age 19 and then left the haunted rough stones of old Montreal for the concrete and glass spires of Toronto where the CN Tower had yet to spear the sky and where the egg of the Sky Dome had yet to be laid as a stone of Jack's contention. He traversed the windy ramps and damp coves of York University, a master of poly science, this child of Dorothy Steves, the niece of Robert Steves, the far from faint-hearted father of Confederation, this son of Montreal PCMP Robert Layton and great-grandson of Philip E. Layton, who fought for the rights of the blind, composer of the Dominion March that chimed on the Carillion, as the greatest prime minister we never had laid in state under the Peace Tower. This greatest Prime Minister we never had, Jack, for President of Student Council Layton, was elected President of Hudson High thanks to campaign manager Billy Bryan's rest in peace. To the sound of Billy's drums on Queen Street, Jack Layton filled his manifest destiny to rise up, rise up, to be a true idealist like philosopher Charles Taylor to embody Canadian idealism and the philosophy of freedom by big political thinker C.B. McPherson. And while Billy played his own version of the Dominion March in the Parachute Club and the King of Kensington strolled through the market and giant ants appeared on the side of the Cameron Hotel, the greatest prime minister we never had penned homelessness, the making and unmaking of a crisis, Penguin Canada, 2010. The greatest prime minister we never had, Jack Party, for sale or rent, Layton, was dad to Mike and Sarah and wrote Speaking Out, and after 14 years of matrimony ended it, became a prominent activist who owned a Starfleet uniform and that entertained the troops at the Federation of the Canadian Municipalities with old 60s folk songs while gay men contracted grids that turned to AIDS and then to bath house busts. Jack was firmly seated in the futuristic saucer of Toronto Council at New City Hall, beating Gordon Chung and fighting the Sky Dome and the bid for the Olympics. And then the greatest prime minister we never had fell in love with Olivia Chow at a fundraiser at Village by the Grange. The greatest prime minister we never had, Jack the fast-talking auctioneer Layton, played Mahjong, Mahjong with Olivia's mother, and then Laura says thanked her for the good sex after, failing to learn Mandarin correctly and spending a weekend at a cottage with her. Candidate Olivia Chow, whose gaze he first met across the wide expanse of teal green water in the peeling pool in the courtyard of Ginsburg and Wong just across the street from the Henry Moore sex sculpture outside the AGO made of molten double oculars. What does it mean? Running for the House of Co uh, Commons. Oh, in Rosedale, and then after a close race, the greatest prime minister we never had managed the megacity as a counselor for the Don River Ward in 1994. The greatest prime minister we never had, Jack the Life of the Party Layton, was involved in many charities, including the White Ribbon and Clayco Sound campaigns, along with Donna Lipchuk, me, Alana Miles, the Bare Naked Ladies, and many others. He laughed with us and he drank with us and he was a man of the people. And along with Pastor Brent Hawks, John Sewell, Bob Hunter, and other hippie commies who tried to imagine a truly caring world 
where common objectives could surpass individual goals, and while Moberg saying out, I'm an adult now, and the condo towers kept growing like an extended middle finger to artists and the poor, and while Mendelssohn Joe blasted opinion from the Speaker's Corner at John and Queen, the greatest Prime Minister we never had married Olivia Chow in a ceremony on Algonquin Island. The greatest Prime Minister we never had, Jack, if I had another point. $4.6 billion, Leighton. Famous for arriving at City Hall wearing scruffy beard jeans and a battered corduroy jacket. Decided to run for mayor as the official NDB candidate and after losing to June Rollins, traded in his hippie commie style for a suit and contacts and a new founding father look. Returned to the ivory tower where the ideals of C.B. McPherson and Charles Taylor lived and rode his bike every day from his home in Chinatown to Ryerson University, a so-called Don Quixote planting windmills in the city through wind chair and green catalysts, and then the greatest prime minister we never had was finally elected leader of the NDP at the convention in 93. One of the happiest days we ever had. The greatest Prime Minister we never had, Jack, the new Tommy Douglas Layton, beat out Pierre Ducasse in 2004 and then took a seat and made friends with the French by appointing Ducasse as his lieutenant, and then after attacking Palmer, made friends with the Liberals to avoid a snap election during the Liberal minority, and then in the shadow of the Stahl government made friends with Stephen Harper and Gilles Duchep for the greater good of all in the spirit of idealism, and then wrote a letter to Governor General Adrian Clarkson, pleased to consider a three-party coalition and then the greatest prime minister we never had walked out when Harper told him the, and the press he'd be king of the co-op. The greatest prime minister we never had, nobody knows when you're down late, was hated by the Canadian Auto Workers Union but beloved by the Canadian people at 92%. In 2006, part of the only husband and wife team in Parliament with Olivia Chow, Jack met with President Hamid Karazi of Afghanistan to bring our boys home, tried to Im implement a program to allow conscientious objectors in the country, battle the new income trust rules that threatened to impoverish 2.5 million Canucks, told the Conservatives to clean up their act before passing any Clean Air Act, and then in 2008, the greatest Prime Minister we never had lost once again to Stephen Harper. The greatest Prime Minister we never had, Jack Darling of the media, Leighton Seen, forming a coalition with the Bloc and the Liberals to fight for the right to strike, proposing a motion of non-confidence and a move to dissolve the minority government, next seen riding on a bank of balloons in the Toronto Gay Pride Parade, and then seen busking on a street corner to raise money for the Stephen Lewis Foundation, making an alliance with the Green Party and protesting usage-based billing advising Michael Ignatieff that if he does not show up to work, he does not get a promotion. And then the greatest Prime Minister we almost had announced that he was stricken with prostate cancer. The greatest Prime Minister we almost had known as the brave and selfless Smiling Jack Layton doubled the seats in the NDP federal election to 103, an all-time high, led the party into the first session of Parliament, and then, on July 25th, 2011, a very sad day, left the leadership to fight his second newly diagnosed cancer, and then on August 20th, 2011, wrote a letter to all Canadians, and it went like this. Love is better than anger. Hope is better than fear. Optimism is better than despair. So let us be loving, hopeful, and optimistic, and we'll change the world. And then with family and friends close by, and while many citizens in the nation cried, the greatest prime minister we never had passed away on August 22, 2011. This was the saddest day, the day that Jack died. The greatest Prime Minister we never had, John Gilbert Jack Layton, laid in state in the center block in Ottawa and his ashes were spread, one third in the Toronto Islands, a place of picnics, bonfires and love, one third in the St. James Cemetery where he dandied up and gave historic tours, and one third in the church cemetery in Hudson, Quebec, where history waits, and Billy Bryan soon stopped banging his drum, and the autumn leaves curled up and blew away, 
as the October winds howled through the broken heart of a country who knew they had just lost the greatest prime minister this country could have ever had. 